Welcome to Classroom Idaho, Learn at Home, Fall 2020, a partnership of the Idaho State Board of Education, the Boise School District, and Idaho Public Television. Welcome to Classroom Idaho. Today's class is for our ELs or English language learners and my name is Allie Howell. I am a teacher over at the Nampa School District. I work at Lone Star Middle School and I am an academic support teacher as well as an EL co-teacher as so I work with English language learners in the classroom. Hi, it's nice to see you again, Miss Allie, and I'm really happy to be back with IPTV. Uh, so my name is Chelsea Jordan, and I work for the English Language Center, which is a place that teaches English to adults from all over the world. Awesome. All right, so we are here to learn a little bit more about the English language through some of our stories. So today's story is called Fire. All right, everybody. So today we are reading a story called Fire, and we want to give credit to the authors and illustrators of this story. It's very important to give credit. So this story was written by Deborah Namugosa, Beatrice Nabune, Allison Tuke, and Rose Sabano, and it was illustrated by Rob Owen. And I apologize if I mispronounced any words, anybody's names there. Um, and then the genre of the, of the story is an informational text. So what does that mean, Ms. Uh, or Ms. Chelsea? Yeah, so I'm seeing the word information here. And to me, information is, you know, data or facts usually, right? And so an informational text is something that just gives information or facts about something. And usually those facts are true. Am I correct? Yes. yes, those are usually true. Awesome. Okay, so before we read the story, we'd like to brainstorm some ideas about what this story could be about and more about fire. First to brainstorm, we would like you to think about what words do you think about when you hear the word fire? So let's think. Okay. So, uh, Miss Ellie, do you want to write some words down that we think about? Sure, absolutely. Okay, so we have the word fire. Fire. The E is silent. And yeah, what things do we think about when we hear the word fire? Uh, Ms. Chelsea, I, when I think of fire, I think of flames. Mm, flames, yes. I think about um, camping and campfires. Oh. So where would a campfire be found? If you're camping, where would you make a fire? So campfires are outside and they're usually in a fire pit. What's a fire pit? So it's like a big, it's usually, it's, it's sometimes in the ground or it's a metal uh, container that you hold the fire in so that the fire doesn't go everywhere and burn the forest down. <laughs> yeah, that's really important. We don't want to burn down the forest. So. I'm trying to make a campfire. So these are logs and then you build the fire and you turn on the logs by lighting them on fire and the little balls around are rocks to make my campfire safe so that the fire stays in the middle. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So another I also thing. think, uh -huh. yeah, I'm also thinking of um, fireworks like on holidays like 4th of July and New Year's. Yeah. So I don't know how to really draw <laughs> fireworks, but, but they're big and bright and loud, and they have pretty colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, something I think about when I think of fire is I think of heat. Mm -hmm. So 
extreme warmth, a lot of, uh, or a really high temperature. So um, when I think of heat, uh, maybe like a thermometer. Mm. Uh, sometimes they look like that and it's like, it's got the different numbers on it. And so this would be hot when it gets to the top of the thermometer. Yeah. Let's see. I also, I just, I don't know why, but I thought of a fire hydrant. Hmm. What is a fire hydrant? It is a place that you probably see them on the street or on the sidewalk. Uh, they are red and they are where the firefighters go if there's a fire in a house and you can, um, they, they plug the hose into the fire hydrant so that there's water that comes out to put out the fire. Yeah, I agree. And honestly, I don't think my picture <laughs> is all that great, but it's, it's, it's usually, you find them in corners. And like Miss, Miss Chelsea said, the red, and sometimes I've seen yellow ones, but they're really important in fighting fires because fires can sometimes be dangerous. And if they get out of control, you want to put them out. And water, as far as we know, is one of the best ways to stop fire. So having yes. a fire hydrant close to your house is important so that when the firefighters come, they can hook up their fire hoses and help put out fires near your house. Yes, exactly. Okay, so I think these are some great ideas. When, when, I, when we think about fire, it's important to, to think, well, where have I seen that word? Or how other forms of fire have I seen? So why don't we check out some pictures yeah. that remind us of fire? Okay, so here are some pictures. And Miss Allie, I'm seeing some of the pictures that we talked about before, like this is a fire hydrant right here, and a campfire. And this is a firework, but it's a small firework that you can hold in your hand. Do you know the name of those fireworks, Miss Sally? Um, a sparkler. It's a sparkler. Yeah, sparklers. I really like sparklers. I think no matter how old you are, sparklers are fun. I agree. What else do you see on here, Miss Sally, for the pictures? You know what? I was thinking, how was, I was talking about heat. And I see that there's a, maybe a hot cup of either cocoa or tea next to some popcorn. And then I see a fireplace in the background. So I think of warm heat and that's safe heat, right? Where that we can use in our house safely. Yeah, so that one's very safe. And the one that would be maybe the opposite of safe is this one where the trees are burning. It looks very dangerous, and this is called a forest fire. Yeah, and forest fires are very dangerous. I agree, Miss Chelsea, and it's really important how we were talking about when we do a campfire that we keep our fire inside of the fire, uh, I guess they call it a fire ring, just like you see in the picture next to that uh, forest fire where they're enjoying a campfire, but it looks like it's safe. If uh, if somehow the flames get out of hand, they can start a forest fire. So be very careful when you have a campfire. Yeah, we have to be very careful. And I think the same is about this picture, which is candles. You know, we have birthday candles and we can have even just good smelling candles in our houses. But if we don't put them out at the end of the day or when we're done using them, they can start a house fire, which is also very dangerous. Exactly. It can be very scary to have something uh, like a flame get out of hand in your house. I do see one other thing, Miss Chelsea, that you have there, and we didn't have that in our brainstorm. Uh, are those hamburgers? I Yeah, those are hamburgers, and those they look, look delicious. delicious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm seeing here that there's some, like, kind of positives and safe fire, and there's dangerous fire, and it seems that fire has – Many different uses. I agree. Fire can be really good. It can help us cook food and uh, help us celebrate birthdays even with candles. But if we're not safe, we can start forest fires or even light our houses on fire. Great. So kind of speaking of some of the dangers of fire, um, 
what have you heard about fire recently? Mm. And I'm asking you at home as well. Think about, have you heard a lot about fire recently? Well, Miss Chelsea, I noticed something outside the last few days and it's all of the smoke in the air. Yes. Is that related to the fires? Yes, it is. And I'm sure many people at home are having the same thing. And even the last month, it's been off and on with a lot of smoke in the air. It can be difficult to breathe. And it doesn't really look very nice outside. It's not very good right now. Do you know why there's so much smoke in the air? Actually, I do. It sounds like there have been many, many forest fires uh, that are coming up, and, and maybe not that the fire has reached us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the picture. Yeah. But there are some fires in our neighboring state of Oregon, mm -hmm. and also our neighboring state, pretty close actually, uh, California, and... Mm -hmm. Uh, another state is Washington. So there's three states to the west of us that have many forests that are on fire. And the, these fires are so big that their smoke is reaching us all the way here in Idaho. Yeah. So, you know, fire can be really powerful and really dangerous. And it doesn't even just affect the state that it starts in, but it can affect all the states near you. And so we just have to be really careful about how we use fire. Exactly. And, and you know, sometimes fire starts naturally in forests. Sometimes there's lightning mm -hmm. or other things that, are, that cause fire naturally. But sometimes it's due to people not paying attention to their campfire or maybe throwing away a cigarette that isn't all the way turned out or, or, or completely the, the flame completely uh, turned off. So we can also help to prevent some of those fires. Definitely. Okay. Well, that sounds like we got some really good background information on fire. And so I think we can start moving forward to read our story. What do you think? I think that is a great idea. Sounds good. Okay, everybody. So uh, before we read the story, I'd like you to know where we got this story from. And it's from a, a website called Storybooks ESL. And it has many, many stories in this website. So you could check out other stories if you wanted to. But the website is right down here. And so if you wanted to follow this link and type it in your computer or your phone to read along with us, you're more than welcome. The, word, the story is titled Fire. I like this picture. <laughs> this guy is breathing fire. We didn't talk about that, did we, Miss Allie? No, we didn't. Yeah, there's different ways of <laughs> fire for sure. Yeah, okay. Now. Yeah, definitely. Okay, look, fire. It looks like he's uh, turning or, or starting a fire with a little piece oh. of, of wood, doesn't it? Yeah, it does actually look like that. It looks like he's blowing on the wood piece to make it become a bigger fire. And as we know, actually oxygen is what helps fire get bigger and how it helps start fires. Yeah, and I see him blowing down on the flames. Maybe that's what's going to make the flames get bigger. Mm-hmm. Fire burns. So this reminds me of our talk about forest fires. This looks like a forest fire to me. Yeah. And, and I see that there's uh, wildlife, deer in this picture, that can also be affected by the forest fires. That's true. Not just humans are affected, but animals and wildlife are also affected, and their habitat is, is hurt and injured from these fires. Fire cooks. Mm. So we can talk. This is a good thing from fire, right? <laughs> yeah. And honestly, just you looking wouldn't... at the picture, it's making me hungry. It looks like they're cooking maybe a, a good soup or a stew over yeah. the campfire. I agree. Looks delicious. I'm hungry. Okay, so fire gives warmth. 
notice how the people are putting their hands full. Yeah. Maybe they're maybe they're cold, and so they started a fire to warm themselves up. And I also see that people have jackets and scarves on. Yeah. Yeah, it is nice. I do. When you're, it's cold outside, a fire can be really, really nice. A fire gives light. Now, where is the fire? I'm not sure if I see it. Yeah, so I think in this window, there is a, what we would call a lantern. Mm. And this lantern looks to be maybe a gas lantern. Or maybe there's a candle inside and it has, it's on fire. Um, and so that, that is giving the light to the house. Okay, that makes sense. And then, so when we see it like that, that little piece of fire, we call that a flame, don't we? Yeah, exactly right. That is a flame. Good. Okay. And then here we have, look, fire. <laughs> I don't think I would ever do what this man is doing and do the fire tricks and breathing fire. Would you ever do that, Miss Allie? <laughs> that looks really dangerous and looks kind of scary. And to be honest, I, I am very scared of fire because of the things it can do. Mm. So um, I think people have to have really good training before they can do things like this man is doing, which is basically breathing fire. And it looks like he has fire on sticks. And I have seen people do this. So they they do dancing and they have music and then they they have the fire and they perform different tricks and throw it up in the air and it looks wonderful it's it's very beautiful to look at but i think that they need a lot of training so don't try this at home no do not try this at home this is for professionals who have a lot of experience and training fire is wonderful yeah, this picture, I love having a in-home fire in my a, a fireplace in my house that burns real wood. Growing up as a kid, I had this type of fireplace. And so many good memories. I have many good memories of like this with my family around a fire. Nice. It looks yeah. very comfortable. Yes. Sometimes it gets too hot though. Woo. <laughs> okay. And it is powerful. Wow, I see people's houses are burning and people are running away. Yeah, I think this is talking about, again, we had the good story of the warmth of a fire and how it can be happy and bring happiness to you. But you have to be very, very careful because it's very powerful and it can destroy things like this. And notice how big the flames have gotten it looks like they're as tall as the the houses that the people are living in so because it's yeah. powerful it, it can get big very quickly i agree okay good and that is the end of the story for for that okay so i noticed some words in our story well, and not really story, but our informational text that um, I thought it would be good for us to talk about so that we can understand what we just read. Good. That sounds like a great idea. Let's see. So our first word is burn. What I would like for you, Miss Chelsea, and everyone else at home is to say the word with me. Burn. Burn. Mm -hmm. Burn. Sorry, I should say. Let's say it three times. I'll say it three times and then you say it. Okay. Burn, burn, burn. Burn, burn, burn. Awesome. Okay. So burn can be a verb. And I don't know if you knew, but a verb is an action word. So it's something that you do. Yes. So when we use it as a verb, it means to be or set on fire. So we can burn things uh, by setting them on fire or when they are on fire, they burn. So for example, the wood here in this picture, it's, it's burning because the flames are on the logs of wood. And so it's on fire. The logs of wood are on fire. So they are in, they are burning. 
burning. Yeah. So the verb is that action of like doing something right now, right? The fire is doing something. It's burning, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we also see it as a noun and a noun is a person, place, or thing. In this case, it's a thing. So it can be an injury caused by heat, fire, or burning. And actually burning in, in the sense that maybe you could rub something a lot and it can cause a burn. Mm -hmm. So here I noticed that this man's hand has a burn. So in this case, the, the burn is a noun. So it's the thing, it's the actual burning from heat or fire or even rubbing. Yeah. So it's gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting to know that we can use it in two different ways, but they seem to be connected, right? So the burning is the action and the burn is when it harms you and it's like on your skin and it's there as a thing. Yes. And actually, it's not always on our skin. It oh. could be, I don't know, uh, on, I don't know, a magazine or paper. When something burns, you could see the burn because it's black or a piece of it is missing with dark edges. Uh, yeah. So it's not just for us, for skin, but for things. That is so good to know. And I think I'm thinking of now sometimes in the oven or if you microwave popcorn, that can burn, right? And yes. but that would be the verb, right? The micro, the popcorn is burning when it's on fire, kind of in dark. Mm -hmm. But you can see the burn on the popcorn, maybe. There you go. You just use that as a noun. You can see the burn, so the burn is the marking on your popcorn. Great. Thank you, Miss Sally. Yeah. So now let's use the word in an example. So I wrote. I had to burn wood to heat the house. So now in this case, I'm using it as a verb. So we have an example for you to use at home. So your turn, you can say, I had to burn and you fill in the blank. So let's think about that one for a second. How can we say, I had to burn Ms. Chelsea, do you have an example? Yeah, I think I had to burn a match to light my sparkler. That's a great example. Firework. Yeah, and sometimes fire can be fun as long as you're being safe. Good. All right. All right, our next oh. one is warmth. Let's go ahead and say that. Uh, Three times, I'll say it three times, and then you can say it three times. Warmth, warmth, warmth. Warmth, warmth, warmth. Yeah. That word is kind of difficult to say. It almost yeah. sounds like there's like a P between M and T, like warmth. Yeah, but it's not. It's actually the TH. I don't know if you can see this back here. TH. Uh-huh. So I think of putting my, my tongue right behind or like in between, or actually it's in between my teeth, like this. Yeah. <laughs> so you're pushing the air through while your tongue is in between your, your teeth. Warm. Warm. <laughs> yeah, this is a difficult word. This sounds, it's very difficult for people who are learning another language because it's not a very common sound. But if you go to your mirror and you practice sticking your tongue out, <laughs> warmth, you will get it right. Exactly. So it's okay to practice. And like Miss Chelsea said, ha having a mirror so you can see yourself is a great way to practice. So warm. <laughs> warmth. <laughs> okay. So warmth is a noun. It's actually a thing. It's, and it's a, it's a feeling. So... It's a feeling of gentle heat or warm temperature. So it's not hot. It's not, it's not the kind of heat where you want to take your clothes off if you're outside and, and the sun is coming down on you. It's not that kind of heat. 
uh, or warmth. It's it's a it's a nice warmth, not too hot. So sometimes in the winter time, we like to have warmth, that feeling of, of warmth. Maybe we use a blanket or put gloves on, or like in the picture, you can have maybe little booties to keep your feet warm, or you could have a nice cup of tea or hot chocolate and you feel the warmth. And I can almost feel it with just looking at the at the mug with, with hot, cho- hot cocoa, I think, in there. Me too. And now that it's becoming fall and this the weather and the temperature is going to get cooler, you know, we won't be able to go outside and feel any warmth pretty soon. We have to stay inside and use blankets and tea to keep us warm and to feel that warmth. Exactly. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to use warmth in an example. So here's mine. The tea gave me warmth after a long walk through the snow. So sometimes we, we, it's really important to still get some exercise and things like that, even when it's cold outside. So it's good to go outside and go for a walk, but it's even nicer when you come home and have a nice hot cup or warm cup of tea to give you warmth after your cold outing outside. Yeah. So now it's your turn. What is something that gives you warmth? You could say it by starting your sentence like this. Something that gives me warmth is, so let's think about it for a second. Ms. Chelsea, do you have an example? Yeah, something that gives me warmth is a fireplace. Mm. Just like we were talking about in the store. I wish I had one at my house. Yeah. 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 I don't have one now, but I wish I had one. (laughs) Yeah, and that's the thing. Sometimes uh, some houses have a fireplace and some houses don't have fireplaces, but it's really important to be safe. If you don't have one, don't start a fire in your house. Make sure you go outside. (laughs) Yes, very true. All right, our next word is wonderful. So I will say the word three times and then you can repeat after me, Miss Chelsea and everyone at home after I say it. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So wonderful is an adjective. An adjective is something that describes something. So in this case, wonderful describes a feeling. So something very good or exciting so like um, maybe here, or, or, and actually it's not describing a feeling, but just describing a thing. Maybe this person here in this picture is feeling wonderful after seeing the sun coming through the, through the clouds. Uh, some synonyms that mean the same thing as wonderful is amazing, awesome, marvelous, or fabulous. So just something that is very good exciting. Great. I love the word wonderful. I think it's, it's wonderful. It's amazing. Awesome. Marvelous. That's a great one. Marvelous. So we're going to use the word in an example. And again, a lot of times we have it connected to feeling. So I feel wonderful after a long, hot bath. So especially on some of those cold days where you've been walking through the snow or something like that, it's a wonderful feeling to be able to take a long, hot bath. Yes. So now you guys can practice. I feel wonderful when. So what is the time when you feel wonderful? You can start your sentence with that. So let's think about it for a few seconds. Ms. Chelsea, when do you feel wonderful? I feel wonderful when I spend time with my family. So it can definitely be something that you do with others, not just something you do by yourself. Yeah, there's many things that can make us feel wonderful. All right, this word. 
It's very interesting word. Um, so this word is powerful. Again, I'll say it and three times, and then I would love for you to repeat after I say mine. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Again, powerful is an adjective, also describing a way uh, that something is. So it's describing a thing. So with the example in the picture, the waves are powerful. Yeah. Um, and the definition for powerful is something that has a strong effect. It can be physical strength, which is something that you touch. That's physical strength. So something that you touch is uh, powerful because it's strong and you feel it, okay? It could be a force. For example, the waves. The waves are a physical force could also be influence over people. So for example, uh, there are certain people that can ask me things and, and their influence over me is very powerful. So I kind of want to do it, right? So for example, my grandmother, I love my grandmother. So she has a powerful influence over me because I would do anything for her. Mm. But be very careful who you do those things for. Make sure that they are good people and have your interest at heart. Oh, go ahead. Oh, fine. The final one is control. Powerful, uh, when you have powerful control over something, kind of the same thing. It could be used for good or for bad. Mm. Yeah, I think this is a very interesting word because... Like I'm looking at the waves and I'm thinking of the fire and like you said, this physical power that it's almost, you know, overwhelming and it's like something you can't really control, right? Like I'm thinking of those big fires and those big waves you have to be so careful about because they are so powerful and strong. And I think that powerful people and that influence is also very strong and you have to be careful and around those things because sometimes those powerful people aren't maybe the best people even though like your grandmother of course I'm sure she's a wonderful woman and her power is more of a, a loving family but there are some people that maybe you need to be careful around yeah some people will use that power over you to to cause you harm. So be careful when that happens. Just try to think about, is this the best thing for me? Or is this just because they want me to do it, but it doesn't help me? Yeah, that's a really good um, thought, Miss Ali. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So let's use the word in an example. The powerful wave knocked me down on the sand. So how can you use the word powerful? And this time, let's just, just think about what kinds of things are powerful. So what have you seen that is powerful? Let's just think about it for a second. Okay, Ms. Chelsea, have you seen anything powerful lately? I was thinking about maybe it was a week or two ago when the wind, was very powerful and in you know Boise and Meridian and Nampa I think it was really powerful and I could see the trees moving you know and it was kind of scary actually sometimes because it was the wind was so powerful. Actually I was thinking the same example Miss Chelsea because I have seen when the wind picks up a lot it has that power that physical force and I've seen even trees that are blown over, mm -hmm. sometimes even over people's houses and it tears down their roofs. So it can be very dangerous to, um, to be around that powerful wind. Yeah, I know I saw a, a person was traveling in northern Idaho and they couldn't keep driving. It was too dangerous to drive because of the wind. They had to stop on the side of the road and wait for the wind to be over. So the wind was even more powerful than the car. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, man, there's a lot of powerful natural forces out there in the world, isn't there? Yes, there are. So, guys, be careful when you're outside and uh, around natural forces. Uh, just like here, we have water, wind, fire. There's really, na really powerful natural forces. 
Okay, guys, so those are all of our words. Now that we know more about those words, let's go ahead and read our story one more time and think about how we can understand our story better. And this time around, make sure that you're reading with us when we go through our story. All right, so let's go ahead and read the story one more time. And again, please feel free to read along with us. Look, fire. Fire burns. Fire cooks. Fire gives warmth. Fire gives light. Look, fire. Fire is wonderful. And it is powerful. Okay, so now that we talked about when we read the story and we've talked a lot about fire, actually, we just kind of want to review how fire can have positive or negative effects. And so what, Miss Allie, what is positive again? Positive is when something is good, like uh, it's, a, it's a great thing to do or it's a good, something that gives you good feelings. Good. And so then we have this other word, negative. And what is, what is negative? Negative is when uh, it's something is bad or it has a bad effect on you, like when something bad happens to you. Great. So we're going to brainstorm again. What are some ways in which fire is positive or negative? And we'd like you guys at home to think about this as well and add to our brainstorming. And maybe you can write down some ideas about positive and negative ideas about uh, fire. So I have a tree map here and a tree map gives us a topic at the top and it has little branches to tell you the different subtopics or categories around the main topic or you could even think of it as details so in this case we have positive details about fire or negative details about fire so i'd like to start um actually let's start with the negative uh that way we can finish off with good with a good i agree okay. yeah so we're going to think about what are some bad or negative things that fire can do. So I was thinking of um, forest fires and uh, in the word destruction, destroy. So it can destroy forests. Yeah, forests and build houses and wildlife habitat. Oh, so destroys forests, houses, habitats. Yeah, and so a habitat, for those of you at home, if you don't know, it's a place where usually wildlife, like animals and um, birds, deer, uh, bunnies live, is we usually call that a habitat. And so a lot of these animals live in the forest, and when forests are destroyed, their habitat, the, basically a habitat is an animal that lives outside's home. So their home is destroyed. Yeah, especially when there's a forest fire, some of the deer, and I, I have heard sometimes that if you see deer running and you start, start to smell smoke, it's because they know that there's a fire coming. So. If you see wild animals start to run away from something, it might be a sign that there could be a forest fire nearby. Yeah, that's a really good point. 
So I know that fire can cause burns. Yeah. So just burns either on us or on our things and it can destroy things too. Yeah. Let's see some other negatives. Oh, right now, I know that with all of the smoke, I have been watching the news and they say that all of the smoke can cause uh, bad effects on us with our breathing. And sometimes they say that we shouldn't be outside or to wear a mask uh, when we're outside if the, fire, if the smoke in the air is too toxic or bad for us. Yeah, so it can be unhealthy. The smoke, the, you know, fire causes smoke and smoke can cause unhealthy air conditions. And so we want to be careful about, you know, I like to go jogging outside. And right now, I'm not going jogging outside because it's dangerous for my lungs to breathe in a lot of the smoke. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Our lungs don't like smoke. So we have a really tough time breathing through that. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I know any more. Yeah, I think to me, I'm just thinking of like destruction and, you know, it, it can, if it's too wild, if it's out of control, there's a, just those, you know, forest fires, house fires, burns, and the smoke from it can be negative. And I like that you say that. It can get out of control and mm. it's probably very easy for that to happen. So it can get yes. out of control. And I think it's the only element that I can think of, if we're thinking of the natural elements, like we talked about wind and water being powerful, you know, we can't control the wind with, it's not a human influence, and the water, if there's big waves, it's really not a human influence, except for maybe climate change, but the fire is something that humans can control, and we have a, we have a responsibility to make sure that we put out our campfires, we are putting out our candles so that we don't cause this destruction. Well, and I, I should say, when it's small, we can control it. But unfortunately, right now, especially in California and Oregon, the fires have gotten so big that we can't control them. So it's important that when we can, that we do. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's move on to some positive, good things from fire, because it can be a really great thing. It definitely can. You know, I'm just thinking of, we've talked about warmth, and I think, you know, sometimes if you're outside and it's really cold, the only way to get warm is fire. And so warmth is a really good way, a really positive thing about fire. Yeah, I can just feel warmth when, uh, and it makes me feel good, especially if I've been cold. Yes. Uh, some other things about fire is that they can help us cook. Uh, food can be, can be fine if you don't cook it, especially vegetables or fruit, but some food can be dangerous to eat if you don't cook it. So when we cook our food, it makes it so that we can eat it and it's not dangerous because some food can carry diseases or it's just bad for us and we can't digest it or eat it uh, without it being cooked. Very true. Yeah, and I think most food, not all food, but a lot of food tastes much better once it's cooked. <laughs> I'm gonna make a little grill here. Yeah, mm. the one thing I will, I'm, I'm excited about fall and winter because I like, you know, to kind of bundle up with a blanket to be warm, but I will miss, sometimes I'll miss the grilling food outside. I really like doing that in the summer. Me too. Yeah, I feel like it almost tastes better when you grill it outside. Yeah. Uh, another good thing about fire is that it keeps forests, and I know this is going to sound weird. Whoops. It can actually keep forests healthy. Yeah, I've heard that actually. So, when fires get out of control in a forest, it's bad because the animals uh, can't live there anymore and um, it's, it kills a lot of things. However, when it's natural, sometimes just from lightning and that kind of thing, it's actually 
good because certain pine trees and certain plants can only give their seeds out when like the 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 seed pod like especially some pine cones they need the heat to open mm. and then the seeds spread out uh one specific pine tree is the ponderosa and i'm pretty sure that the ponderosa pine cone only opens when there's heat huh yeah that's interesting and i've definitely heard that too that you know in the past you know the people that lived in america a long long time ago would sometimes use fire to help you know the forest be healthy too um but we have to obviously those those are professionals that do that the other thing i was thinking of is i was we were talking about fireworks and fireworks can be dangerous because sometimes they start forest fires but they're also fun and they're a fun way to celebrate things sometimes if they're used by professionals and i think that's the most important thing i think of is you know you have you can't use the big fireworks if you're not a professional you should only use the ones that are legal to use yeah that's a great point that you make because some fireworks are illegal you are not allowed to have them because they must only be used by professionals and a professional is someone who has had training and is educated in how to use the fireworks so that they don't cause big big forest fires or or damage to people's houses yeah so they can be fun but use them wisely yes great i think that's the only thing i can think of i mean i think we covered a lot of different positive and negatives and maybe our friends at home have thought of other ideas and they've written them down in their notebooks yeah, I would love to hear about some of those. I wonder if there's a way. I think you can comment on our YouTube channel. So yeah. If, hear from you. Yes, if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave some comments about what the positive and negatives are of fire. Okay. We would like to talk about fire in the community. The community is the area around us and it can it is made up of people and houses and buildings and all of the people that live around us so in our community how can we stay safe prevent forest fires that means prevent stop them from happening and use fire wisely great yeah i think this is really important and we have some pictures here to start the conversation about how at home we can um be safe with fire. Okay. So at home, I don't know if you have noticed, Miss Chelsea, but in my house, every room has a fire alarm or fire ah. detector, I should say. Maybe not alarm, but I feel like it's like an alarm because if it senses fire, the fire detector will start making a loud alarming sound. Yeah. And uh, it helps us know if there's a fire in our house. Good. And yeah, I have, I have smoke detectors and fire detectors in my house as well. And uh, they're really important. So if you at home don't have one in your house or it's not working, you really need to check it because they're very important to make sure that you're warned when fire is nearby. Exactly. And so what happens, what should we do if we hear the fire detector going off? Well, I think if I am a child if I'm small. Uh, I actually would go over to those pictures over all the way to the right. Mm. And I would try to leave my house in a safe way. Uh, if there's smoke, however, get down on the floor and so that you're not breathing in the smoke. The smoke will stay up, but if you're down crawling on the ground, you won't breathe in the smoke. Okay. So if you're a child, definitely leave right away however if you're an adult and the fire and you kind of know that the, or where the fire is or where it started like say maybe you're cooking dinner and and you didn't turn off uh one of the one of the burners and uh maybe a pan caught on fire it's really important to have a fire extinguisher and that's that one in the corner and you can use that to put out a fire. So uh, it's really important to not use that unless you're using that on fire because it can be toxic and it can hurt you. 
So only use it if you're putting out a fire. So on the side, it has like a little hose and it has a clamp. So push down on the clamp and use the little hose to uh, take the fire down. However, the fire is too big. Just like children, leave through your nearest exit and if there's smoke, get down on the ground. One thing, and uh, I think people forget about this, is that um, you should be really careful about opening doors because if there's a fire behind the door, uh, the doorknob could get really hot and you could burn your hand. So the other thing is make sure that you have a fire plan. Talk with your family about how you can leave your house safely if there is a fire. Yeah, and if there's like what Miss Allie said, it's really important. And if you you know that the fire is very big and it's out of control, because remember, when a fire is out of control, we just need to leave, get down on the ground and leave. And I know you might want to take some important things to you, but you really need to leave as soon as possible because the fire can can it's very dangerous, very powerful. And you might think you have time, but you don't have much time. So you need to leave as soon as you can if once the fire is out of control. But of course, be safe, get down low on the ground, check the doors, and try to leave calmly. You know, don't be too nervous, but it's really important that you leave as soon as you can if there's a big fire. Exactly. So there are some good things about fire at home too. Like Miss uh, Chelsea was talking about, we could have fun with little sparklers. Uh, as long as you are supervised by an adult and you're doing it safely, uh, especially sparklers you should do outside. Make sure you don't come inside. And then when they, they finish, they're still hot. So be careful to uh, maybe put them in a place that you know won't start a fire, like maybe in sand or in the dirt. And make sure that they're completely out before you take the little stick in the, and put it in the garbage. Good. That's very good. And then yeah. the other thing is, like Miss Chelsea and I were talking about, grilling. Grilling is awesome. As long as you're being safe, it can be a great thing. Yeah. And finally, if you are in a fire and you are able to get, uh, maybe if you have a cell phone or if you can get to your neighbor's house. So yeah, don't stop to get your cell phone. Leave right away. Uh, yeah. But if you have it in your pocket, don't take it out. <laughs> so <laughs> but if, you, if you leave your house, go find someone, unless you have your own phone, and call the firefighters or the fire department. Call 911 in an emergency only. Don't just call, just to say hi because it's, a, it's important um, that those lines stay open for people that have emergencies, but you can call 911 to get help from professional people that know how to put out a fire. Yeah, that's really important. And when you call 911, they're gonna ask your name, your address, and I think that's the main questions they'll ask and maybe you know how big the fire is, but you really need to know your address. So if you don't know your address, you need to memorize your address so that you can answer the question, what is your name? What is your address? And you need to be able to say the address. And if you don't feel comfortable with your English skills, you can, at, you can say, I need an interpreter for Arabic or I need an interpreter for Spanish and they will help you, okay? But if it's a, an emergency, you really should know your name and your address because no matter what, if you say there is a fire, my name is John, my address is, and you say your address, they will come. Exactly. The other thing, don't hang up, stay on the line. They will actually help you. Um, they'll ask you if you're okay, if you need assistance. They'll, and like I said, they'll stay on the line with you, especially if you don't know where you are. They'll ask you to say, well, what do you see? How can we help? Uh, so that we can get to you quickly. Yes. Great. So those are some ways that we want to be careful at home, but we also want to be careful outdoors. And so I'm seeing here this, I've seen this guy around everywhere. Do you know his name, Miss Sally? Yeah, that's Smokey the Bear. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah. Is our, um, I guess, our 
fire mascot, but our fire mascot to be safe in the outdoors. Yeah, so you'll see him everywhere and it says prevent wildfires and uh, you might see him near the different types of danger. So this is like a scale, what we'd call it a scale of how dangerous it is at this point in the season for wildfires, for forest fires. So if it says extreme or very high or high, you have to be really careful about your campfires because just a little spark could make a, a, a big forest fire happen. And when you say that, sometimes when our uh, our warning uh, is at extreme or very high, some areas won't let you have outdoor campfires because they don't want the risk of starting a wildfire. Yeah, that's very true. And if you see that and there's an extreme or very high warning, you probably shouldn't have a fire. And if you do have a fire, you and it's not allowed you could get a very big money fine <laughs> and pay a lot of money so it's very important to follow the rules about fire and for putting out the fire in the campfire area you if you're near a body of water you can pour water on it but you also should dig a hole and bury all of the wood and get all of the cover it with dirt and sand to make sure that there's no smoke and there's no more fire and really a great way of knowing where to have a fire is looking for those fire rings made out of either stones or out of metal. And they're usually round and black and a lot of times they're on the ground mm -hmm. and they'll have like a, a grill that you can move on and off. And um, so make sure that you have your fire inside that fire ring. But if you don't have one and for some reason you're camping, make one with stones away from trees. So make sure that the area is clear and there's no trees overhanging because the, the, when the flames are going in your fire, there's little sparks that could fly away and catch on the wind and grab onto a tree that could be nearby. So make sure you, ha you are having your fire away from things that could catch on fire. So Ms. Chelsea, you said to have a, a, a shovel? Uh huh. It, or water. Yeah. Okay. So something I do when I go camping, number one is I look for a campsite that's close to water and I always bring a bucket because if it starts getting out of control, you don't want a little cup with a little bit of water. <laughs> you want a big bucket so that yeah. you can pour a lot of water to make sure it's out. Good. So we want, when we go camping or we're going to have a fire outside, we want to have a water source nearby if we can with, and a bucket and a shovel. Oh, and last, never leave your campfire by itself. Do not leave. No. Always stay with the fire. Very good. Yeah. These are great tips. Thank you. All right, everybody, it was really fun getting to talk about fire with you and learning a lot more about it and how to be safe. One thing you can do at home is make a poster about fire safety. Yeah, so this is just a simple fire that tells people how to be safe. And we've talked a lot about it. So you guys should have a lot of ideas on how to make a fire safe. All right, everybody, it was really fun. And we will see you next time. Bye. Funding for Classroom Idaho has been provided by the Friends of Idaho Public Television, the Idaho Public Television Endowment, and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. To request a YouTube link of this episode, please visit idahoptv.org slash classroomidaho or call 1-800-543-6868.
you're watching Idaho Public Television's Create Channel.